it, it my this one hive, not my all my rest of my bees, but this one hive went somewhere on Saturday and found <coughs> something poisonous, and it and it got and they got into it. And this one little bee. I mean, look at it. It's a nerve poison. It's awful. It takes them about. 24 hours to die, and you can tell they're in extreme pain. It's, it's terrible. I know what happens. Somebody went out Saturday morning and went, oh my God, my peach tree's in bloom. I forgot to put the spray on it that was supposed to go on when it was in bud stage or in the winter, and they spray it. Well, my bees were in that peach tree or whatever it was, and then they brought that poison home. Um, studies have shown that if as few as 100 bees come home with poison on them. They'll go, oh, there's something sticky and it burns me. Another bee will run over to help. And another bee will come to help, and another bee. It takes a few hours for those hundred bees to have touched every single bee in the hive. Every single bee will be engaged in trying to help the bees that are harmed. And they'll spread the poison throughout the whole hive. The saddest thing about this was the queen, who always has a contingent of bees who are taking care of all of her needs while she's laying the eggs. She did not rush to help the others. The other bees were called away to help the, um, the bees with the toxic chemical on them. And I found this queen just running at the top of the hive. She was by herself. The queen is never by herself. And there was nothing I could do. I can't wash her off and put her somewhere else. It just broke my heart. I went and cried. And Joseph went and dug me a hole, and we just put everything in the hole. This, I don't, there's nothing else to do with it. I can't even use that hive again, because now it's got chemical on the sides of it. We have to educate people that, that this, this reliance they have on chemicals to do every single thing is a false system, that these things cause harm in ways that they're not even aware of. What was your question? Um, do you think colony collapse disorder, do you think colony collapse disorder has anything to do with Oh, yeah. How we're being, being I think colony areas? collapse disorder comes out of bad management practices that we think are good. So most beekeepers do them. I think it's also the fact that we have toxicity in our environment that just weakens the bees in general. And then we have this screwed up system of mating and making queens that are actually weaker than the strong queens that nature would make. So, and, and it's probably even more about it, but we have to teach people about this. Let me put on my farmer hat for just a minute. I'm a farmer. Um, I have a biodynamic farm, which is also organic. People think that when they have, when they grow something and they go, oh, it's got tomato blight, or it's got, you know, some disease or virus or whatever, they think that, you know, if they run to the hardware store and they buy some chemical and come home and spray it, all is well. Well, it will kill, that poison will kill the aphids or it will kill something else. But really, the bottom line is the soil for wh from which the plants get their nutrition was weak to start with. There was some impediment in the system that caused this to go awry. I saw this in action. Do, do I have to be done at 10.30, by the way? 10.45. Oh, good. Phew. I saw this in action one time because we have compost. We have many compost piles. And in springtime, I saw these, this, um, what was it? It was, uh, I've forgotten which, it was something that grows on a stalk. Anyway, in the winter, I had taken the stalks and thrown them on the compost pile. Well, I threw, um, some of them on there so that they, the wind blew them off and they landed. And in the springtime, what happened was on the outside edge of my compost pile, there were all these plants that were growing up. And they were, grow they were grown like you took a machine gun and rat-a-tat-tatted in a straight line uh, because they fell off the stalk right there and they germinated and came up. But I had, um, Justin, do you remember what plant that was? Mustard. Mustard. It was mustard. Thank you. <coughs> and so when these plants come up, they're tall and they're thin, um, and then they start to flesh out immediately. And what I noticed was I had two plants out of probably 60 or 80 plants. Two plants had aphids on them. 
and nobody else did. And I thought, wow, that's really, and rather than killing the aphids, I spent a few days walking by going, why do I only have aphids on two plants here? Why are they not on the ones next to it? I kept looking, looking, and finally I realized what happened. When these seeds fell off the stalk in this like kind of triple row, these two plants germinated just a little bit later, maybe two days later, three days later, and they're in the back row. So they were getting just a little bit less sun because the plants in the front row were taller and they were blocking the sun from them. So they were coming up, then they were trying to catch up, and instead of lush, fleshing out and getting good leaves on them, they were spending all their energy trying to grow tall fast mm -hmm. so that they could still reach some of the sun. They were thinner, more watery, and frankly, they were a weaker plant. Mm -hmm. So the aphids, Mother Nature calls <coughs> aphids in. Mother Nature calls mm -hmm. bugs in because they'll eat down that plant and therefore keep the seeds from that weak plant from going into the nature's gene pool. I mean, how logical is that? It's so beautiful. Mm -hmm. So when we take a chemical and go, oh, I got aphids, instead of saying, why are my plants weak, we say, Oh, I got aphids. If I just spray this chemical, I'll kill the aphids. But I'll still have weak plants, and they'll be susceptible to something else. So in that, that, that's really what I think is the most important thing to know, is that the weakness is already there. We just need to address it by building up the system stronger so that everything that grows is full of the maximum amount of nutrients and the joy of life, even, that that plant can possibly have. Oh, I can get off on a tangent. <laughs>